a great prophet has risen among us. God has visited the people. Welcome to St John's Church, Princes Street in Edinburgh, and welcome to my home. My name is Jeanette, and I am a member of the congregation here at St John's. Today we are remembering Isabel Hapgood, a lifelong and faithful Episcopalian. She was a force behind ecumenical relations between the Episcopal Church and Russian Orthodoxy in the United States of America around the turn of the 20th century. Born in Massachusetts on November the 21st, 1851, Hapgood was a gifted student with a particular talent for the study of languages. In addition to the standard fare of the time, Latin and French, she also mastered most of the Romance and German Germanic languages of Europe, as well as Russian, Polish and Church Slavonic. She possessed the particular gift of being able to translate the sub subtleties of Russian into equally nuanced English. Her translations made the works of Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Gorky and Chekhov, among others, available to English readers. From 1887 until 1889, Hapgood travelled extensively in Russia, cementing her lifelong love of Russia, its language and cultures, and particularly with the Russian Orthodox Church. She would return visits, she would re make return visits to Russia almost every year for the rest of her life. Her love of Russian Orthodoxy and its divine liturgy led her to seek the permission of the hierarchy to translate the rites into English into English. Hapgood's already established reputation as a sensitive translator certainly contributed, but in the meantime, she had developed close relationships with Russian clergy and musicians at all levels. The work Service Book of the Holy Orthodox Catholic Church took 11 years to complete. It received support of the Russian Orthodox bishops in North America, particularly Archbishop Tikhon, who was later to give Hapgood's work a second blessing when he became Patriarch of Moscow. Isabel Florence Hapgood is faithfully remembered among Russian Orthodox Christians in North America for her contribution to their common life. Her desire for close relations between Orthodox and Anglican Christians and for her making the liturgical treasures of their tradition available to the English speaking world. She died on June the 26th, 1928. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Saviour Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray with the words from Psalm 24. 
The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of Glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the, three, on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The response to the reading is the canticle song of Jonah. I called to you, O God, out of my distress, and you answered me. Out of the belly of shale I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas. And the flood surrounded me, all your waves and billows passed over me. Then I, am, then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I ever look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land beneath the earth, yet you brought me up, brought up my life from the depth, O God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, O God, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. With the voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to, your, to you what I have vowed I will pay, for deliverance belongs to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading is from John. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The response is the canticle, a song of the wilderness from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the, of the deaf be unstopped. Then shall the lamp, the lame, leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The ransomed of God shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Teach your divided church, O God, so to follow the example of your servant, Isabella Florence Hapgood, that we might look upon one another with her holy envy to honour whatever is good and right in our separate traditions, and to continually seek the unity that you desire for all your people. We ask this. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who prayed that his church might be one. Amen. 
On Fridays, we focus our prayers on healing of bodies, souls, and minds, on healing of society and creation, and on healing our relationships with God and one another. Between each section, we will pause for silent prayer. Let us pray. God our healer, whose mercy is like a refining fire, by the loving kindness of Jesus, heal us and those for whom we pray, that being renewed by you, we may witness your wholeness to our broken world. Through Jesus Christ, in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbours. Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bountiful God, you call us to labour with you in tending the earth. Where we lack love, open our hearts to the world. Where we waste, give us discipline to conserve. Where we neglect, awaken our minds and wills to insight and care. May we, with all your creatures, honour and serve you in all things. For you live and reign with Christ Jesus, Redeemer of all, and with your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us unite our voices into one and pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And finally, let us say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>